So let's look at the next stage within the first phase, which is going out there and starting to do this, right? So getting out into the field, going out and approaching girls. Okay, so this first period of going out to approach girls uh, is hard. It's hard. And it can be beginner's hell, right? So the learning curve at first can appear to be going very slowly. And the first thing you're going to have to understand, to, if you want to get through this phase, because you do, right? You don't want to stay in the, I'm not, I don't know how to really approach girls and I'm scared of doing it phase for very long, is you're going to have to reach a critical mass of a certain volume, right? So a lot of the people who come and learn from me have been trying to do this uh, by themselves for some years often. And we talk to them about, okay, so what have you done? And they say, well, you know, I've been practicing cold approaching and I've been talking to girls. And we always say, okay, how many girls do you usually approach a week? And they'll say, oh, well, not every week. You know, I mean, I approach a girl here, you know, every now and then and I'll see an opportunity. Maybe when I'm out with my friends, I'll approach. And yeah, I'm, I'm getting really bad results. I'm just, you know, I'm getting rejected. I'm getting a lot of, a lot of anxiety. To which I have to say, dude, you haven't actually started. Yeah, it, it, you haven't started at all. You've done one day's worth of seduction in the last three years. And that's, you know, can be a, a bit of a nasty wake-up call for a guy. <clears throat> but by the end of training with me for one day, he realizes it's true because we do more in that one day than he's done in, he, in his entire life. So what you have to do going out into this initially is commit to it and commit to being regular about it, right? It, it means not approaching a girl every now and then because really... That's literally the same as me going to the gym once a month and just sort of going like this and then walking out. That's the same as doing nothing. In fact, it's worse because you kind of think you're doing something. Right? So I'm literally not affecting my muscles at all. I'm not increasing my fitness at all by lifting a weight once. And there is a correlation. If I randomly talk to one girl a month or something like that, I'm not doing anything Really, I'm not learning anything. So <clears throat> you need to understand that this beginner's phase requires a certain volume of women to be coming into your life in order for you to actually get the lessons and get through it, move to the next bit, which is much more fun, which is the dating lots of girls and having sex, right? Let's not stay in the shittiest part of this, in the most difficult part of this for years because we're lazy, right? So <clears throat> if you want to... The truth is, if you want to get good at this, it takes a couple of years at least to get competent. And as you will see from the book, I'm not doing this once a week. I'm doing this all the time, every day. And that's what we always say. Approach at least one woman a day. That's 300 plus women a year. That's a lot of women. Do it once a month. It's almost nothing. 12 women a year. All right, once a day. And if you're living in any kind of city that's got more than, I don't know, 50,000 people, 100,000 people maybe, you can do that, right? There's, there's not a, we're not running out of women in the streets, running out of women on the bars. There's enough women out there for you to go and talk to one a day for sure. Sometimes we meet guys who can't because they work on an oil rig or they work as mountain guides. Uh, we've had students who are very isolated and we have to talk to them about, well, if you want to get good at this, you're going to have to change your lifestyle. You're going to have to spend your weekends in bigger cities. You're going to have to you know, maybe think about changing your career or doing something, some big change to actually mean that it's possible. So if you're a guy who's living in a place where there are no women or very few women and you want to get very good at this, how are you going to do that? You're going to have to change your lifestyle. And I've done that. I've moved cities multiple times in my life, sometimes for women, other times for a pursuit that I wanted to improve. I wanted to be a musician. I was in one city where there was no music scene. It, it's, it's pointless me wanting to be a musician in a place where there's no music. So what did I do? I moved to a new city where there was these opportunities. And this is the start, kind of stuff you start to think about once you start thinking bigger, start thinking globally, start thinking, what do I really want? Well, I want an abundance of this. Is there even an abundance of this resource in my area? Actually, there's not. Okay, I need to move to a place where there's more of that resource. Okay, so keep that in mind if that's, if that's your situation. So the first thing we have to do is commit mentally to going through this process and understanding that if you approach five girls, you have no sample size to make any kind of assumptions or conclusions about. 
And we see guys doing that. They approach five goals and then they tell us what they think seduction is. Oh uh, yeah, you know, with, the problem with cold approaching is, what, dude, you've done five. That's, that's nothing, you haven't even started. Until you've done a hundred or several hundred approaches, that's when you start to see patterns. That's when you start to see, oh, okay, if I do a hundred approaches well, learning how to do them well, then I'll see that some, let's say five, ten percent of girls are really nasty, probably less than that. I'll see that five, ten to fifteen percent of girls are really open and really friendly. And I'll see that the vast majority are fairly neutral on the fence of leaning towards no, right? That's what I see, see to be the general reality now that I've done this hundreds and hundreds, thousands probably times. <clears throat> so a, a mental commitment and an actionable commitment to going out all the time and meeting girls regularly is vital. The next important thing we need to look at in this beginner's phase is anxiety and rejection. Okay, so these are the two things that cripple men in this stage. It is the primary reason why they often give up in this stage. It's because when they see a woman and they want to speak to her, they're filled with what they perceive to be anxiety. And they're anxious about what? They're anxious about this woman rejecting and judging them. Okay, so it's, that's the primary fear. It's that I'm going to expose myself and then she's going to not like it and she's going to judge me for it and she's going to pass that judgment on to me. And possibly other people will see it as well. That's why men are so fearful of this. I've taught combat pilots and soldiers who fought in Afghanistan who are very, very brave people have been through things that I would be terrified to do and yet they're terrified to talk to women. They're more, they would rather go to war than go and talk to a blonde at a bar. Why? Because it's, their, it's not just their body, their life that's at stake, it's their identity, their ego, their self-esteem, their belief in themselves. And the problem is... In that stage, if, you, if that's happening to you, what it means is you're giving the right to a complete stranger who doesn't know you to make an assessment of you as a human being, to judge you and pass judgment and pass sentence on you. That's the, that's the, the main problem here. Right? So what's the, what's the better mindset? What's the way to shift through this fear? I cover this a lot in my five principles of natural seduction product. I give you the how-to the the meditation techniques to actually shift through this perceived anxiety and realize that it's not really fear. It's a misplaced assessment of fear onto what could be neutral sensations. So if you don't understand what I mean by that, anxiety has a physical presence, right? When we're afraid, we feel things in our body. Uh, We also feel these things under a number of other circumstances, such as when we're excited or we're uncertain, uh, or our fight or flight reflex has been triggered. And what you start to see is real fear is about actual danger. These anxieties are really misplacements of the fear response onto just feelings in your body, right? So I feel when I see a girl I want to speak to and I start walking to her, I still feel that rush of sensations that I used to call fear. Now, to me, it's actually excitement. But I shifted from fear to a neutral understanding. Okay, it is what it is. It's just sensations in my body. Can I still operate with these sensations? Yeah, I can still do it. And that's the main thing that's going to really help you to get through this phase is changing the meaning on fear, changing it from anxiety to it's just sensations. It's just an experience I'm having and it will pass. And then eventually that'll shift into it's a positive. It is excitement. It's anticipation. This is vital for you to work through this because there is no way to avoid the unpleasant sensations. There is no way to avoid being rejected by a girl, having a girl deny your request. There is no way to avoid running out of things to say sometimes and making a fool of yourself and tripping over your words. All of that you will and must experience. And I still do it, even though I'm very good at this, I still get those experiences. More importantly, rather than trying to avoid them, let's learn how to process them effectively. So as you go through this journey, especially the beginning stages, you're committing to, I will meet a girl every day at least. Uh, So you're meeting these girls. And at first, it might not work very well. You're a beginner. You haven't done this. It's, It's understandable. The girls don't respond well because you're miscalibrated, because you're nervous, because you speak too fast, because you're not listening carefully. 
because you're standing too close or far, too far away. There's all these things that you learn over time. You can speed that up vastly by having a mentor or a teacher, but you can learn it yourself, as I did. But over time, you calibrate, you become smoother, you become more responsive, you listen more carefully, and so, of course, you get rejected less. <clears throat> but rejection is always going to be a part of it, and understanding that it's not a rejection of you as a human being. How can it be? She doesn't know you to the depths of your soul. It's a rejection of whatever she sees in front of her, which is just you doing some stuff that you're uncomfortable and unfamiliar with and probably not doing it that well, <clears throat> and so she decides she doesn't want to see you again. It's not personal. It really isn't. She can't, it can't be personal unless you make it personal, unless you give her the right to make judgment of you. Girls say nasty things to me sometimes. Girls reject me. <clears throat> it, it's, I just use my meditation to process it if I felt a bit unsettled, sometimes I do, then yeah, I'll close my eyes, meditate through it for a few minutes and then I'm fine because I'm not carrying that approach with me. So that's a vitally important thing. This will vastly help you to move through those periods until you start getting enough positive reference experiences that start proving to you that actually, yes, women do like you. Actually, yes, this can work and actually this does work. And in fact, wow, it works amazingly well, right? So please carry that through as you get through this stage. An extension of this is to start looking at your definitions of success. Of course, we get into any pursuit to succeed at it, to achieve it, to get the rewards. But in seduction, the, award, the rewards are not so apparent initially. Especially if you're going out and you're hit grinding and talking to heaps and heaps of girls and you're not getting anywhere and no one's giving you numbers, or if they do, they're flaky numbers. That can be very demoralizing uh, over time. And the fact is, sometimes it's just get, it is just going to happen. You will have, even when you're good, you have long runs sometimes where it doesn't work. Even in like living memory, I remember a year ago having this period where for three weeks, I just got 100% flakes. Every girl flaked. And I was, that was when I was a master at this, you know, when I was teaching this internationally. And I just had to realize, okay, cool, it's just the, it's a downswing. And for some reason, I'm just not on at the moment. And I just have to accept it and know that it will change because I've been through this before. Right now, maybe you haven't been through it before, but understanding that uh, it is going to change and that you need to start reframing what you perceive success to be. Because if you go into an interaction and you go, you think to yourself, if I get this girl's number and she agrees to go on a date with me, it's a success. Anything else is a failure then I'm setting myself up to fail very often, much more often than I succeed. Instead, start to reframe what success means. If I go up to a girl and I stop her on the street and I express my intention to her, I try to find out something about her, she reveals a little bit about herself, uh, I make a joke, I flirt with her a little bit, I touch her on the arm, and then I look her in the eyes and I project my sexuality. And then some minutes later, I say, would you like to grab a drink with me maybe Friday night? And she says, not really. And I perceive that to be a success. Well, I'm an idiot because actually I succeeded many times in that interaction. All those steps up to the point where she just said no were successes. I got to practice opening. I showed a girl what my intention was and didn't hide my sexuality. Success. I asked a complete stranger about her personality and she revealed something about herself that probably she wouldn't normally reveal. Success. I reached over and bridged the physical space and made contact with her physically, which is something I usually don't do. Success. 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 Till she goes, no, this isn't going to continue anymore. At which point I go, okay, that's as far as I can go. I did the best I could. Uh, or maybe I didn't do the best I could. Maybe I did some things really good and some things really badly. Or maybe I took, was ballsy and then I retreated. Or whatever, it doesn't really matter. I have a mixture of successes and lessons instead of a failure. Right? Failures are very demoralizing, especially when you have 10 of them in a row, 10 times 10 days to, forever. Right? That's demor demoralizing. However, a stack of successes that, that reached an impasse where I couldn't go any further at that moment is encouraging. All right, so be aware that this takes time. It doesn't take decades, but
but it can take months and years to get really good at this. And you have to be gentle with yourself as well as, of course, pushing yourself and understand that, yes, you, if you are doing things that you never did before or doing much more of it or doing it in a way that's more ballsy or clear or confident, then you're succeeding. The phases are shifting. Sometimes they feel like the earth's not moving, but it is, it's moving, right? We're gonna get past this part. And then suddenly, even on the same day, you can have it. Failure, failure, failure. Hang on, let's reassess this. All right, what am I doing? Yeah, I'm learning skills, I'm getting experience. All right, success, 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 impasse. Success, 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 impasse. And then, last one of the day, the girl says, hell yeah, I wanna hang out with you. And you fuck her that night. In the same day, you can go from being the absolute loser who's rejected by every girl to the guy that has sex with a cool chick. Uh, that happens. We see that with students, especially on our residentials. They'll be, at the beginning of the day, they, they're in tears because they can't handle the pressure and girls are being nasty to them and they feel like a loser. And at the end of the night, they're with a girl. <laughs> like Because we put them through such intense processes, they can experience all of that in one day. I'm not saying that happens every day or will happen every day. But overall, you need to be comfortable with being the guy that's sometimes just a loser or, or that other people think is a loser or other people project judgments onto. Uh, that you're silly, that you're a buffoon, that you're uh, falling over your words, that you're freezing up. All of that stuff happens and you're going to have to come to peace with it over time in order to also be comfortable with being the boss, being the cool dude, being the guy who says the right things, being the guy that pulls the trigger, because those guys only appear by making lots of mistakes or getting lots of experience, All right? It's not a for failure. It is multiple levels of success that at some point reached a point where you couldn't go any further. Gentlemen, James Marshall here with a very important announcement. It is done. What's done, you say? It's my book. After 10 years of writing this baby, my first ever book, A Natural History, The Seduction Journals of James Marshall is finished, released, and ready for you to purchase right now. All you have to do is click the link below or to the side to find out full details. Plus, I'm also releasing today a brand new three month online course called The Six Phases of the Seducer's Cycle. This is all about the long game of seduction. How do you integrate this skill set into a lifetime of success to make sure that the rest of your life is full of amazing sex, incredible relationships, and the lifestyle that you really want? Now, I have to warn you, this course, plus a whole bunch of amazing bonuses, will only be available until the 15th of April. So if you're interested, click the link below for full details. This is James Marshall, signing out. Oh,